speak is the Hampton Beach Area Commission with the Hampton Beach Village District. Just want to say I like all these unanimous votes so far tonight. <laughs> Oh, you want to make me pipe right down? So I. Does it say? Um, First thing we're going to speak about is their uh, annual update. Good evening, and uh, thank you very much uh, for um, accommodating um, our rescheduling of this meeting. Um, we would have liked to have come in at the month of April. Um, uh, but uh, due to schedules of both uh, groups, it, it, it turned out that uh, this was the closest date that we could get to uh, come in and, and talk about uh, um, the annual report and also the sidewalk issue. Um, let me start by introducing, I have eight out of nine commissioners here with me tonight. Um, I've just passed around a, a list of our uh, uh, commissioners and their appointment dates, uh, showing that uh, you know how long that they uh, um, will be on the commission unless they're uh, reappointed. Um, to my far right, I have Fran McMahon representing the Rockingham Planning Commission. I know most of you, if not all, know these individuals, but for the general public and for the people watching on TV, I would just like to take that minute. We have Chuck Rage representing the Hampton Beach Village District. We have Dean Merrill. Uh, our commissioner at large. We have Bill Watson, our executive uh, vice president, uh, or I should, I, I should say uh, vice chair. Uh, John Nyan, Bob Preston representing uh, the um, Greater Hampton Chamber of Commerce. Bob Ladd representing the Hampton Beach Village District. Mike Hausman representing Dredd uh, was called out to another meeting in another part of the, uh, the district tonight, so he was not able to come. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, let the record show that this is the Hampton Area Commission, not the Hampton Village District. Yes, correct. Thank you. The, um, well, you're on the commission. Yeah, but he's on the commission. Okay. Well, very good. Thank you. Yep. And then we also have um, our last member, um, <coughs> Selectman Griffin, who represents the town of Hampton. Um, I want to just make one comment with regard to our commissioners. Um, as you all know that this is a volunteer organization, and uh, for the most part, if I was to take a look at the commissioners, except for our commissioner at large, um, our members have been uh, with us for close to seven, possibly eight years, uh, dedicated to working on the Beach Commission and all of the efforts uh, of the Beach Commission during all of those periods of time. So I just would like to get that on, on, on the record. I also want to clarify one thing about the agenda. It was my mistake. I appreciated the uh, town manager's office um, changing the agenda tonight. Um, it was my typo where I indicated uh, the second part of the agenda was to talk about the uh, ownership of sidewalks. Uh, it was meant to be the maintenance of the sidewalk, so I apologize for that error, and I appreciate the town manager's office so quickly correcting that after it was uh, pointed out to me. My uh, first agenda item is the annual report. Under RSA 216-J, colon 3, Roman numeral number 8, we are obliged to uh, bring a report up to the uh, Board of Selectmen along with state officials once a year on or, on or before November and give them uh, our annual report. Um, that annual report in writing was submitted along with all of the other annual reports for the town of Hampton at the end of 2006, uh, 2015 and they are, they're included in your annual book. Um, we have had uh, customarily uh, the last couple of years uh, then gone in front of the selectmen, uh, usually in the March time frame, uh, because at that point we know what selectmen are, are here, um, and just to give somewhat of a verbal uh, report on our activities. I just want to take a minute and highlight what I would consider eight major points of our activities in 2015. And then the first, the first and, I, and I think this was really important uh, because of our coordination requirements under our RSA is that, as we all know, uh, in the uh, 
the March-April time frame, we had a lot of snow in 2015. And uh, the Beach Commission was uh, able to coordinate with the assistance and help of the town, uh, especially the Public Works Department, DOT and DRED, to uh, remove uh, a ton of snow uh, down at the beach. Um, everybody remembers that one day there's a ton of snow and the next day it's all gone. And that was through the spirit of cooperation between the town and the state. And um, I, I will just add that the Beach Commission was uh, directly involved in the coordination and facilitation of that, uh, that event. Next is, um, as we have from uh, many years, supported the uh, completion of the seawall up at North Beach um, and Senator Stiles uh, efforts all throughout the years to have that seawall completed. The Beach Commission continued to advocate um, and was um, um, asked um, and we responded very quickly in appreciation of to help host uh, the ribbon cutting of the completion of the seawall. Uh, that was a, an event that we actually saw after many years of hard work from the Senator uh, come to uh, completion and the Beach Commission once again through its advocacy and support of not only in terms of uh, doing letter writing but also uh, t testifying up in Concord uh, in, in support of her bill. The, um, the third, um, last summer uh, we, we knew that we wanted to at least start the conversation with community groups and residents of the beach to talk about the south entrance way uh, coming into Hampton and how we could improve and make some suggestions on some improvements. And we held oh, three meetings during the summer um, with individuals both from uh, the town, which was represented, uh, different departments from the town, the state, DOT, DRED, but also residents of Hampton Beach coming in and just talking about what they would like to see um, coming over the bridge. And a lot of great ideas came from that. And a lot of great ideas have been now noted and, and um, saved. Uh, unfortunately, some of the ideas uh, require funding. Some of those ideas are more long-term than short-term. But I think it was a great effort uh, from the Beach Commission to facilitate that type of discussion to at least get it started. Um, and, and once again, um, there was a representation from all parties um, that attended and participated in those conversations. During the, uh, the summer, early summer, um, the Hampton Beach Area Commission, along with the support of the town and a, and a letter from the town, uh, went to a public hearing and advocated once again for additional money in the transportation 10-year plan. Uh, we had the opportunity for Executive Council Chris Nudo to come down to the beach as part of his regional public hearings. And um, we continued to advocate the need for more money in the uh, transportation 10-year plan. Uh, from our advocacy, um, and once again with the, the support of the town, um, it has now been um, put into the transportation plan, approximately $8 million over and above our two, uh, $250,000 uh, into the uh, master plan uh, for Ocean Boulevard reconstruction. <coughs> that was a very success uh, Senator Stiles was very active, being the Senate Chair of the Transportation Department, I mean Transportation Committee, um, and I also should suggest that um, the Department of Transportation was very supportive in our efforts to talk to Executive Counselor and indicate that that, uh, that project is, is critical, not only to Hampton, but to the entire state. We continued throughout the year talking about economic development. Uh, we understand uh, that uh, Hampton Beach is still growing, both publicly and, and privately. And we continue to look for different ways of how we could support different economic development projects and initiatives to, to make that happen. And we will continue that into this year. We continue to partner with the building inspector. Um, there were a number of uh, occasions uh, throughout 2015 <coughs> where upon recommendation of Mr. Schultz, um, developers, homeowners came to us asking us to help them and provide guidance to their architectural design. 
This was something that the Beach Commission, through the efforts of Tom McGurk, a number of years ago was able to put together a, a design guideline uh, handbook uh, so that people understood what we wanted to see in terms of the architectural design of Hampton Beach. So we've had a number of those meetings in 2015, and all, by the way, um, uh, in my estimation, were successful. Finally, uh, the biggest project that the Beach Commission worked on uh, this past year, and we continue to work on, is the transportation grant. If you recall, back in 2012, uh, we made a first effort. Um, Senator Stiles and Mr. Welch and myself made a visit to Washington, D.C., to the Transportation Federal Highway, um, and it was an interesting day trip, uh, especially when we found out that the first address that we were going to was the wrong address, and we had to walk 45 minutes to get to the right address because we couldn't flag down a taxi. Anyways, long story short on that one, uh, although we had put in a what I thought was a very good supportive application, which one was supported by the state and the governor as the number one priority for the state of New Hampshire, um, it failed. Uh, and the, the feedback that we got from Federal Highway was that they really couldn't consider our application primarily because it was not on the New Hampshire 10-year master plan. So we went back to the drawing boards and we said, all right, how do we get on that 10-year master plan? And so that's when we first received that uh, 250000 $280,000 grant uh, to get, get into the master plan. So that was that first step. Then we did also noted that maybe we should start small and take a look at transportation within the Hampton Beach Village, uh, Hampton Beach Master Plan itself. So the Beach Commission made a decision to go and uh, file an application once again with the Federal Highway. This time was for $375,000 to have um, a study, uh, restudy done of the Hampton Beach uh, Master Plan and take aspects of that plan and anything referencing, referencing transportation that we would take a look at and see what the, the, the authors back in 2001 uh, were thinking in terms of what their suggestions and strategies were and to revisit all of those, but also to take a look at some of the things that we really needed uh, to work on with regard to recommendations such as Ocean Boulevard and other related uh, uh, areas on Hampton Beach. Um, we were successful in getting that grant, um, and it was uh, partly due to, once again, the town's support, and partly due to the support that we had received from the state, and specifically the Department of Transportation. Uh, we uh, entered into an agreement with the Department of Transportation um, uh, at the end of 2014, and we kicked off the, the project in 2015, and some of you, uh, if not all of you, uh, participated in a number of hearings that we have had throughout the year, trying to get feedback from not only residents, but town officials, state officials, uh, everybody that would have what I would call a stake in, in Hampton Beach under the eyes of transportation and trans, uh, transportation-related issues. And we have continued to do that. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, next month uh, we will be getting a, a final draft report, draft report, uh, from the uh, DOT's contract of VHB for us to take a look at and then to go back to our organizations that we represent uh, and talk with them during the summer to see which alternatives that they would prefer uh, and what some of the suggestions that they are making with regard to the uh, master plan uh, we should consider and which ones we should not consider. So that has been a, a big part of our uh, uh, strategy uh, in 2015 and once again it will continue to be that strategy in 2016. That to me is um, really the highlights. Uh, I know you all have the end report. Uh, for further detail, I might add that uh, a very important part of the commission has been our administrative assistant, Ann Marshawn, who I know is watching TV tonight and watching us. Um, Ann uh, is, has been our secretary for a number of years now, and um, as part of our RSA, um, we are supposed to get support uh, for administrative services, either from the town or from state parks. 
and what we did uh, to save money for both organizations a number of years ago, we raised private funds that we continue to pay uh, for secretarial administrative services for Ann without asking the town or the state to, to pay for that cost. Um, saying that, I would like to open for any questions that you might have with regard to the annual update, um, and then we'll move to the second agenda item. Regina. I don't have any questions right now, no. None right now. Okay. Phil. Uh, I would defer to uh, our, our member <coughs> rep, and then I'll follow, please, sir. Okay. Well, <coughs> um, uh, I've been on the board probably five years uh, on the Area Commission, and they've all, we've worked very hard um, doing a lot of things that, you know, particularly I, we worked very hard on getting the new uh, buildings that were put there and working as the liaison between the town and the state. I mean, you yeah, know, the town and the state. Um, and that is one, when the Hampton Area Commission was chartered by the legislature, it was done so that we could have this commission that would work with to, to facilitate a uh, conversation between the town and the state and make sure that we can report back and you know share information so that we can all work together and I think that's what's important here working together uh, we realize um, Things don't always work out perfectly. Uh, I know that one thing that um, that we worked on this year was to uh, get <coughs> the study continued all the way to Winnicunit Road um, because I think that is where uh, the town people generally come from from that area, from Winnicunit Road or coming down from High Street. So it's important that that area from Winnicunit Road, it's also where Winnicunit Road is, is where the Hampton Area Commission is. That's the final ending of, not. I don't mean the Hampton Village District. It ends at Winnicunit Road. So, uh, and the Hampton Vi Village District also has worked very hard also. So it facilitates a conversation between the village district, the Hampton Area Commission, the state, and the town. So it's it's worked out good so far, um, and I think that we're on the right track to getting some things done. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, commissioners. Mr. Chairman, good evening. Uh, thank you for your attendance tonight, and. Uh, there's no finer uh, class of business people uh, or uh, public servants than those that sit here tonight uh, and uh, uh, pursuing business interests uh, in, in the North Atlantic, very close to the uh, Atlantic Ocean in this day and age is not an easy task. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll direct my comments to you. Um, I uh, perused the uh, website and thank you for your uh, annual report and uh, in doing so it, it spurs uh, research into what you folks do and that's consumed uh, a large part of my day today in, in discussing um, uh, the Hampton Beach Area Commission. I will say that on the website the last uh, the last minutes that you have posted are from Pretty, pretty close to two years ago. I would uh, request that those get uh, uh, up to speed as we look at Cannon Mountain, as we look at uh, the four other commissions. Uh, their minutes are up to date within uh, several months, and yours are uh, uh, a couple of years old now. So it makes it easier for the governing body and the citizenry to research and have these discussions and assist you in your efforts so we can assist ourselves. But again, it's two years out, and I spent a lot of, lot of time today wobbling around uh, both the Department of Transportation's website uh, and the State Parks website, and the data is not easily secured. So if we can get that uh, along with the other commissions to that standard, that's great. I'm specifically looking at the Cannon Mountain uh, Advisory Commission, and again, I want to just limit my remarks to the commission. Um, we contribute by virtue of our operations just out of our Hampton Meter Fund at the town of Hampton four times what Cannon Mountain provides for the real estate park transfer. Four times, just from our meters. 
just from our meters. And this is to educate the public and what goes on and the greatness of what goes on at the beach. Uh, at their 15 April meeting, um, the Dread Commissioner, Mr. Rose, uh, attended. And he attends a lot of uh, commission meetings, but he doesn't come here. Uh, and uh, I would uh, perhaps, on behalf of the board, on behalf of townspeople, and certainly if he's making uh, um, the Cannon Mountain advisory uh, commission meetings, <clears throat> that I would, uh, I would like to see him here because uh, we make a lot of money for his, his outfit. Um, Phil Bryce um, attended that meeting. He's not here tonight. Uh, I would like to see him on behalf of uh, the town of Hampton, on behalf of your commission. I would uh, respectfully ask that they, uh, they uh, come to future meetings. Um, Chairman McLeod of the uh, Cannon Mountain Advisory Commission um, went over their uh, enabling legislation to found the Cannon Mountain Advisory Commission. And of course, yours, as you stated, is the 216 J1. It's the Hampton Beach Area Commission. And it was uh, put in effect in June of 2003. Uh, it calls for, I believe, nine members. And uh, um, there are a lot of people that are Hampton residents on that, and there are people that aren't Hampton residents on that. There are people that uh, um, our state employees, and uh, it's an interesting document, and you can you can read that. Uh, you've got under 216J3 the powers and duties of the commission. So that uh, that is your enabling uh, um, law, and uh, it it mirrors the Cannon Mountain Advisory Commission. Uh, it specifically refers to a 2001. Uh, document the Hampton Beach area, and I'm saying this on for, so the people at, at home watching can understand because I don't think they get a full understanding of this. This RSA uh, 216J1 uh, specifically refers to the Hampton Beach area master plan, and it's some 200 pages long. And many of us have read it and reread it and read it and read it again. Um, your changes to that and your updates in the 15 years um, would be of interest to the public. And as such, if they, they are uh, readily available, to put on the, uh, the website, as other commissions do in the state. Um, we're now into the um, uh, uh, past the three to nine year phase in phase three of your Hampton Beach Area Commission. Um, and I don't see updates to it. Um, and I'll go over briefly what it calls for in this time period. Uh, and this is uh, the document that is to re referred to in law. It's to acquire permitting is needed for public projects. That's on page V5. And it talks about ensure the beach is clean. That is on page V6. And this is specifically talking about implementation. Um, close off portions of Ocean Boulevard. Uh, reconstruct Ashworth Avenue. Support parking needs. And extend events and attractions to the shoulder in off season, maintain the six foot depth of the channel and mooring field, install underground electric service along the main beach entrances, and ensure gas capacity needs are met and linked with the development and gas lines are properly mapped. So that's that's what the document says, and I think I think that needs some work, and that's my opinion. I don't speak for the board. Um, and it says here on page V3 that the plan is to be updated every four years as a means to ensure recommendations will meet the needs of the program, the goals, the strategies, and the recommendations. So uh, we'll be looking for your updates every four years that you've had. Uh, on page uh, 424, uh, it talks about the matrix of economic strategies, the long term, 10 to 50 years. And, and I'm not necessarily a 10 to 50 year planning guy. But um, economic incentive and economic development programs, this document says keep tabs on existing businesses. Um, marketing programs and special events identify new housing markets. Physical improvements tie into regional transportation networks. So I think, it's, um, I think it needs a little work. I think in fairness, it's, it's a tired document. I look forward, me personally, to the upgrades as required by law. We talk about investment in the uh, community. <clears throat> the town in, in association with its uh, partnership with the beach um, did about $17 million. Is that right, Mr. Welch? Yes. $17 million. And the assessor's office, in terms of private investment from 2006 to the present date, um, pushes very close to $100 million. That's private people, any of whom are here that have invested in their own capital, invested in their own real estate, and invested in the future of Hampton Beach. 
Um, what has been important and, and instructive is to realize, uh, as you scour these websites, is uh, the miraculous contribution that the business owners, that your commission, that the people of Hampton and the Beach have made uh, to this joint effort. And uh, I've spent hours and hours, and this is an old report, it's difficult to uh, get current data um, anywhere, and certainly sometimes that goes to the state. I paddleboarded out from uh, Route 1 out to 95 yesterday, came upon the liquor store and it spurred my thoughts about the great revenue camp that this town is for the state of New Hampshire. And the revenue they, they grab out of this town is pushing $200 million, rooms and meals, tolls, liquor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Our operational costs are hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to support that. Um, so it, it was interesting, and this is from the 2014 financial report, and it's interesting how great um, a message that your commission can report is it compares and contrasts the cannon, is it, is it contrasts and compares the sunapi, uh, and what a great job those that sit with you, Mr. Chairman, your commissioners and business owners that are here today, uh, and stakeholders and people with skin in the game uh, have contributed contributed to the state. The talks on uh, um, the financial report that there's an all funds approach to the park system. And we just said that uh, um, Mr. Bryce and Commissioner Rose uh, attend uh, regularly the Cannon Mountain Advisory, but they don't come here. Uh, and we do four times uh, what they do. And that doesn't count the $200 million in their revenue camp that they have in Hampton. How much is that? The, you say four times. Do you have a dollar figure? I do. I'll get to that. Okay. I'll get to that. I have, I have specific details from their website. And so um, they talk about an all-funds approach, but in the middle of winter when we have business owners that don't have the state parking lot plowed, when they don't have uh, the sidewalks plowed, when they don't provide the services to Hampton people, uh, this should be an all-operations approach. <clears throat> and they're funneling money out of that meter and out of that Hampton Beach operation to other parks. And it says the all funds approach is used to recognize the shared nature of costs and to allocate costs to the correct revenues with the various business units. And I would say that um, the state park system, I would say to Mr. Bryce, I would say to Mr. Rose, um, that they need to get that in line because we need our money here to support ourselves before they start sending it up to other revenue camps. Uh, the Hampton meters operating uh, in the most recent data I had, it was 2014. <clears throat> the revenues were $2.1 million. They transferred directly into the state, and I know you know this, $1.6 million. We can build our own seawall without the state ever bonding money, and that's what they do, just out of our meters, just out of our meters. Cannon um, transferred last year, uh, and they far exceed our debt and uh, uh, um, what we bond for the seawall by a large sum, and I'll get to that. Cannon did $324,000, $324,000. They get hundreds of thousands of dollars of marketing support, and we blow them away. When I say we, the people in this room that are here tonight, the underlying strength of our self-funding model is that revenues gener generated from the enterprise parks, which is Hampton, are reinvested for the benefit of the entire state park system. Uh, we need to make sure that we're taking care of this one 12 months a year. The remaining, it talks about um, they've capped the Hampton Capital Improvement Fund at $200,000 per year. So that's all we get. We, we are simply a sieve for the rest of the park system, for the rest of the state. And that needs to be approached, that needs to be uh, addressed, in my opinion, with uh, state regulators, the commissioners, uh, and the directors down there. And they could start by showing up at these meetings. They talk about uh, uh, the seawall. 50% of the general uh, fund and then 50% of the Hampton meter fund goes to that seawall. We can build our own seawalls without the state with just the money that's coming from the meter fund. Not even the rest of the state park system in Hampton. The assignment of the debt service of the meter fund will reduce the year-end transfer of the Hampton meter fund balance to the park fund in the future. We haven't really seen that. And it hasn't been explained, and we can't address that with the commissioner, and we can't address that with Mr. Bryce. It talks on page five of this report that seasonal staff costs in the park system have, have risen $0.6 million. Now, I know Hampton's increase uh, isn't a big part of that, 
So they're running a lean operation down there. And if you look at Canon, it's getting eaten alive, and it runs in the negative. Eaten alive runs in the negative. We're subsidizing that. And if you study this, this document, as we all should as leaders, and it is the Department of Resources and Economic, Economic Development, their fiscal year ending statements. Uh, it's pretty bleak, and there's room for improvement, and there's room for improvement in Hampton. There are a myriad and a plethora of parks that make no money, that charge no money. And if you go up there in the wintertime, there's nobody at them, and their parking lots are sanded. And I've been there, and I cross-country ski up there, and they're beautiful in our park system. Our park system and our parking lots look like a third world nation. And it's tough to conduct business down there. And it's tough to make money down there when those are the conditions of the state. And again, they have an all parks and an all funds concept. It should be an all operations concept. When you look at Cannon uh, specifically, and we want to compare and contrast because this is a commission and this is a state park. Cannon uh, total revenue was $6.1 million. Okay, we did 2.1. We shoved off 1.6. Cannon shoved off to the Parks Fund $324,000. These are their numbers. These are their financial statements. We're getting smoked. We're getting totally smoked. And numbers don't lie. And uh, they at Cannon, when you look at their uh, expenses, they spent $300,000 on marketing for Cannon. So they're not cleaning your parking lots. They're sending all the money to the other state parks, and they're spending 300 grand to have them drive right by you, especially when there's no snow last year. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense, and I think it needs to be addressed. Uh, the seawall repair, if you look at the bonding, if you look at the capital expenditures, between 2015 and 2027, uh, the Hampton Beach Capital Improvement Fund, which is already bonded, uh, is a total of $1.5 million. $1.5 million. Canon, which is losing money, Canon, which smokes us in terms of keeping money and getting hundreds of thousands of dollars of marketing revenue, Canon's total bonding is $4.6 million in that same period. So, um, again, they're getting more marketing, uh, they're losing money, they're keeping more of their money, they're getting more of the visitors, and uh, they're getting more for their infrastructure. There is a, uh, and we'll come to this, and it's, it'll have some closing remarks, but I have studied this, and I think it's valuable, and I think your annual report is valuable. There is at the uh, Department of Resources and Economic Development a guiding principle for leases, and I think it's time we started leasing some of the state property. Um, and Sunapee, of course, leases uh, itself out to Okima, which is a Vermont corporation, and they just had a big addition out there. And uh, you'll be surprised that I've studied that lease extensively. I'll get to that in a second. And I think there's room for the uh, Area Commission in the Town of Hampton to start looking at accepting responsibility for our own operations within our own zip code. Uh, but there's guiding principles for the lease. Um, there is uh, Forest Lake, there's Jericho Campground, there's Sunapee Ski Area, the Seacoast Science Center, New England Ski Museum, Franconia Notch Ski Club. <clears throat> there's the Yeckert and Coleman SP. Um, and there are, again, myriad and uh, a plethora of people that are already doing that, including Sunapee, including Sunapee. And also of note, Sunapee's retail operations uh, send money over to Cannon Mountain as well. <coughs> I don't think uh, Hampton Beach is getting any money from Sunapee, are we, Mr. Welch? I don't worry. No, I don't think we are either, uh, after a careful, careful review. So again, uh, you know, for the commission, um, the lease for um, Sunapee, uh, almost a thousand acres of an ongoing ski resort. Uh, the price that they pay, and that doesn't include the new addition, for a thousand acres in a ski resort is $150,000 a year plus 3% of the gross. And they, they skim a bunch of the gross. So uh, that's one heck of a deal. You can give that to Mr. Preston, he could make some money with that. You give that to uh, Mr. Merrill, you give that to Mr. Rage, $150,000 a year. They're leasing a Vermont corporation, Okemo, and they have just uh, renegotiated an expansion. There was an initial term of 20 years. It can renew for two 10-year periods. And then on this latest uh, new lease, I believe it's another 20 years that they can uh, extend the lease. So it's a 50-year lease 
at $150,000 a year for a, uh, a mountain. And uh, again, they subsidize uh, Cannon. Uh, Commissioner Rose, um, again, who's not here tonight, um, he's issued his final decision. Uh, talks about more revenue um, for the vast expansion that has met some opposition uh, up in Santa Fe. Um, it, oh, excuse me, it's an additional 10 years. So there was uh, 40 years that were allowed on the first initial lease for $150,000 a year. This final decision for Santa Fe is another 10 years. So it's a 50 year lease at 150 grand um, for a whole mountain. And uh, I think we can do better in Hampton in negotiating in partnering with the state uh, that benefits our state. Dredd has benefited from nearly the 8.5 million in lease payments. These payments have supported extensive capital upgrades at Cannon Mountain. So again, Cannon Mountain is a money loser. Sunapee's making money. Sunapee's leased for nothing. Uh, and Cannon Mountain, and this is Commissioner Rose's report, just released. Dredd uh, has supported the extensive capital upgrades at Cannon Mountain. Hampton Beach doesn't get any of that money. As a result, Cannon, which also gets hundreds of thousands of dollars of marketing that we don't get, has uh, increased its skier visits, has enhanced its financial position, has provided critical revenue, and we're not getting that. We're getting skunked, and I don't think we like that. We talk about State A, the town of Newbury, where Son of Pig is, in Goshen. Newbury has received since 98 $2.3 million in revenue. We get nothing. We beg. We plead, no one even comes to our meetings. That's how bad it is. Uh, they're averaging $130,000 a year. Newberry, they have 2,000 people in that town. Um, Goshen has received $275,000. So there's vast room uh, for improvement. And having said all that and researched and thought about it and, uh, and commending all of your work, uh, um, I think that's um, a start with the state, and this has nothing to do with the sidewalks yet, and that's a whole other issue. I think uh, in line with what you just heard about Cannon, um, revenue from the meters uh, should go to uh, the Hampton Beach Village District for $200,000 a year. The town of Hampton should receive uh, $200,000 a year, and that's exclusive of any dread finance agreement now. And the uh, Precedent and the practice is already enforced. There's revenue sharing, and we're getting none, and we're contributing four times as much as Canon. In accordance with Dredd and the New Hampshire Parks concept of maintenance, all state property, all state property should be uh, maintained to standard to include American Disabilities uh, Acts. Federal laws include the sidewalks that we'll talk about later on. Uh, that includes plowing state facilities down there and doing a annual, annual uh, maintenance and upkeep and uh, plowing and maintenance that includes sidewalks 12 months per year. It's a shared funding and it's a shared operation and they're leaving us holding the bag. There should be year-round plowing of the state parks and parking facilities that include the standards of Cannon in many of the North Country ski areas. And finally, um, we talked about the lease. You know, Sunapee's getting leased for a buck fifty. Um, I would be in favor, and uh, we can dot the I's and cross the T's, but as a discussion moment, um, the South Beach State Park, um, we should lease that for 50 years. Uh, every study from the Hampton Beach Area Commission to the uh, 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 stuff on the Department of uh, Revenue uh, website, Department of Transportation, says that's underutilized. Um, we should lease that for 50 years in accordance with the dread guiding principle for leases. And uh, we'll give them $150,000 a year and 3% of the gross, just like Sunapee does. Only we're not getting a mountain, we're getting a parking lot and an old building. And uh, Hampton can do one heck of a lot better uh, for itself. It's fair, it's already in play. And those are just some of my comments, uh, Mr. Chairman, and to you, commissioners, and, and to you, Mr. Chairman. And I think uh, there's a lot of room for research, and there's a lot of room for growth. And uh, I think this is how we move the ball forward in our dealings with that $5 billion corporation that is the state of New Hampshire. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, may I just respond just to a couple Absolutely. of things? I'm not going to be able to respond to everything because I think a lot of what Selectman Bean has indicated in comparison to Cannon and the state park here is the state park. It's not the Beach Commission. Um, but let me let me just clarify a couple of things because I, I, I don't want the uh, general public to get, to get misunderstood. Um, a number of years ago when it was decided that the, uh, the town was going to assist uh, in taking minutes 
of our meetings. Uh, those meetings have been um, faithfully posted uh, on the Hampton Town website. Once a month, we post the draft minutes, and then the following month when the uh, minutes are approved, we post those. So um, our minutes uh, are posted. We make aware to our state agencies that if you needed to read our minutes, uh, they're on our website, uh, I, I should say on the town website. So that's one thing. Uh, and just a couple of other things. Um, within the first couple of months of Commissioner Rose being appointed, um, he did come and he spent a fair amount of time with us at uh, the Beach Commission so that we would be able to share with him what our thoughts are, strategies were uh, with regard to the, uh, um, the master plan. Uh, and he's been very responsive. Mr. Bryce, Mr. Bryce, in my opinion, goes well beyond having to attend a monthly meeting. He sends Mike Hausman, who is his representative and who also is the supervisor for the Seacoast <coughs> for state parks. He attends every single meeting. As I said earlier today, he was unfortunate not to be here tonight, which I know he wanted to be. But with Mr. Bryce, I have his work phone number, I have his uh, home number, and I have his cell number, and he has mine. And so we have a, a working relationship, really, um, that we don't need to have meetings um, to, in order to address issues. Um, the, the other thing, too, and, and while we're talking about commissioners, um, the new commissioner for DOT, within her first week, I think it was within the first couple of days of employment as the new commissioner of DOT, made it a point to come down here and not only meet with the Beach Commission, but met with uh, um, uh, Jamie uh, uh, as part of a, a meeting that we had at the police department uh, and where the commissioner herself came and extended her, her saying, you know, we, we're here to help. Let's talk. So. I, I think we, we are getting the the ears of, of different individuals. Um, as I said, you know, I can't compare Cannon Mountain or Sunapee with the state park here. It's not out of our responsibilities. Um, Mr. Bean, uh, you know, you have a lot of good facts there. I'm sure you've done a lot of research. Um, we're more than happy to, if you want, under our responsibilities to facilitate a meeting with you and state parks so that you could have that discussion of comparisons between fees and leases and all that stuff. But that's really not what we do. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. Mr. Chairman? A couple questions I have. You, uh, Beach Area Commission, who formed that? <clears throat> it was through the uh, state legislation. So it wasn't the town, it was the state legislature, and the, yep. and, the, and the state legislatures came up with the number of people on it and, and where they came from? That's correct. And the only change to that, Mr. Chairman, was back in 2009, through an amendment that Senator Stiles was helpful to put through, was that since there was a resig resignation of one of the members, and that member was from the Department of Energy, State Department of Energy and Planning, uh, they felt that they did not play a role in the commission, so we were able to uh, get a uh, revision in 2009 from the RSA that would eliminate that position but create a commissioner at large that the other commissioners could, could appoint. And that commissioner at large has been appointed ever since then. Um, Chief Sawyer, for many years, was our commissioner at large, did a great job. Um, he then, when he became uh, chief, he decided that he'd, he'd move on, and that's when we uh, brought in uh, Mr. Dean. Um, that was one change, and then the other change I might add is that we also, during that same uh, amendment, changed the sta staggering times of the commissioners, uh, because we felt that at, uh, it was important that we'd have some consistency within the commission, so that not everybody would be up for change all at the same time. So we, we changed it to a two to three year staggering period of time. And that's why you see on your list of commissioners the different years that our appointments uh, go to. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to uh, make a couple of statements. And one, uh, uh, there was one time when I was a state rep in, in on a Hampton issue, and Phil Bryce called me on the weekend. I, I made a call to him, and he called me on the weekend. He returned the call. So well, I've seen Phil Bryce a number of times down around the beach and talked to him and has been responsive to what I did. And I think that we have to make sure that we separate 
what Selectman Bean's talking about between the state and the town and the commission. I think the commission, from what I've seen, has done an excellent job of trying to promote and move that master plan forward and address the issues in the master plan in doing that. And I think that that's very important that, you know, we have issues with the state, but I think the commission is helping us deal with those issues. And when we talk about Cannon and Sunapee and expansion, we have to go down and look at the west side of the beach down there, and we have to look at the $18 million that was put into the structures down there. And I drove down there today just to take a look, and if you look at the west side of the beach, it's great. The boulevard itself on the other side need a lot of work. And if the state's willing to cooperate with there, I think that's an issue too. But I think there are issues, and there are issues with rooms and meals taxes, which Senator Stiles fights all the time, which I know the commission is going for. But that's the state and the town. That's not the commission and the town. So I just want to make clarify that the, the, uh, the town, I think the public, that they're doing a great job. They're working at the master plan. They're working at chipping away at it. And I think we, we do have response from state people. I, <clears throat> I would just like to say that uh, I also have met with Phil Bryce. And if you called Phil Bryce, he'd meet you at any time, Phil. And he'd be glad to talk to you. What the policy of the state is, <clears throat> for having been here for 12 years, and it's very clear what their policy is, is they won't come here because they've been attacked over and over and over again. Uh, not quite as in a lot worse than what Phil, you know, a lot well, harder. Let me just, let me, I, I, uh, I'm no, just, no, no, okay, no, no, no. I'm talking right now. Okay. No one's and, attacking anybody. Uh, you can talk to these people at any time. They will, uh, all you have to do is make an appointment. I don't know about Mr. Rose, but I do know about Mr. Clement because I met with him, and that's all you have to do is ask. The reason why they don't want to meet is because they have to go back and discuss it with the governor's council or all these other people before they could make a decision. And a decision can be made when there's, they'll meet with two selectmen, but they won't meet with three. That's been the policy the whole time I've been here. The boards have all accepted it for all 12 years. Uh, they, I mean, they weren't happy, but everyone's realized and no one has challenged it. I uh, couldn't agree with Phil Moore that some, these issues need to be uh, dealt with, but they don't need to be dealt with in regard to the sidewalks. You mentioned all the money. Well, uh, um, between uh, 7 Ocean Boulevard and 615 Ocean Boulevard, the taxpayers there pay $4.5 million to the town of Hampton every year. And over the next eight years, that will amount to $36 million. The um, Beach, Hampton Beach Village District pay, over, pays re, the taxes that are collected there amount to over $12 million each year. And over the next eight years, they're going to amount to $96 million. And um, these are full amounts. And I don't want to see these people that live on Ocean Boulevard uh, held in the crossroads. I'm for separating these uh, sidewalks so that the people that are paying and they are being, they're getting taxation without any representation. They're being pushed back over and over again between the town. <clears throat> so this does need to be done. Exactly what Phil's saying. I'm 100% supportive of that. That's what we're talking about here, Rusty. As long as we're talking about the commission That's what and we're their talking report, about. I'm talking about, the, I'm talking about what he just said. And I'm responding and to what he just said. And I'm all for having a discussion. The sidewalks are another issue that we're going to deal with. But there's, Great. like I said, uh, just on Ocean Boulevard, $4.5 million a year goes, and we're getting nothing. Just one last rebuttal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I am just talking strictly financial numbers uh, and uh, uh, an urgency to um, and, and perhaps uh, sit down and discuss those with people. And uh, uh, if that, and I don't think Rick was saying I was attacking anybody, but this is business. <coughs> this is a $26 million corporation. The state's a $5 billion corporation. And I was quite frankly surprised when I started doing the research on how much Hampton, how much less well Hampton is doing than some of the other places. And these are commissions, they are commissioners. And simply to um, invite someone into your house, um, 
Mr. Rose and Mr. Bryce, I think is, is nice because they make four times what they do in Canada. And nobody's attacking anybody. And we have said that these are some of the best business people in the world. And I've lived around the world. And I've lived around the country. And uh, it's, it's great caliber of people. And it's a discussion. And uh, there's a lot of money out there we're not getting. And uh, it was strictly metrics. It was strictly data. It was provided by the state. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I would like to respond. Uh, I'm not saying that Bill's attacking them, but I did see several selectmen here attack them. And I could name them if that's necessary, but it's happened over and over and over again, and that's why they don't come. Yes, sir. And those selectmen aren't here anymore, I don't believe. They were voted out of office, and there's a lesson to be learned there. <laughs> <laughs> so... Bringing it back to the board, do we have any other questions for the commission? Does anybody on the commission like to speak for you? Not, they're, they're going to be speaking on the sidewalk issue. But if you wanted to add one on, thing. On this, um, I've been um, commissioner, I've been village district commissioner for years, and the relationship with the state 12, 15 years ago was different than now. And I got to tell you, if I need to get in touch with Phil, Phil, if I need to get in touch with Hausman, I need to get in touch with Mr. Watson. <clears throat> it's like that. And everybody is working together. And I think that if we look to the future, we need to work together and work with each other. And maybe some of these issues that Phil's talking about uh, could be resolved. But it, we need to get to the table. And um, I think that we, that's the only way to move forward. And I think uh, Senator Stiles has made it a lot easier for all of us. And um, I, I urge this board to meet with these people and, and make things happen. I would like the re uh, rec record to reflect that the figures that I just mentioned I got from the tax collector today. And then they're actually on the low side because they're expected to go up. Any other questions on the, uh, the, the area commission's annual report? I have nothing. Seeing none, we will continue.